equivalent rates. Okay, um, six bagels for three bucks or one bagel for one buck? What would you rather have? I guess it depends on how hungry you are in, in some respects. But if, if all things are being equal, if you're just looking for the best deal, um, I, I'd use a, a unit rate here um, to see what, what six bagels would cost. Or you could even do a, um, you could do a ratio table. You could graph it. You know, there's so many ways you could go. Um, we'll start with six bagels for three bucks and make it into a unit rate here. So per dollar, if I was to divide this by three, the, the deal is you're getting at this rate two bagels. If we divide this part by three as well for one dollar. So, or I should put divided by three up here. This will equal two bagels for one dollar. And that's clearly a better deal than one bagel for one dollar. So I would rather take this deal right here. Like I said, we could have done it in a number of ways. We'll look at um, a ratio table on, on this last example that I'm going to give you. Uh, similar problem. Are, are these rates equivalent? Um, let's find out. Eight t-shirts for 40 bucks. I'm just going to use the letter T to make things shorter for myself here. Eight t-shirts for $40. And um, what do we want to see? Well, is that equal to $20 for four t-shirts? The, the thing that you want to check is, am I dividing by the same thing on both parts, or am I multiplying by the same thing on both parts of this? Um, I guess we'll call it a, we call this a proportion when they're set equal to each other. Um, I divide 40 by two, that gives me 20 bucks. If I divide eight tickets by two, hey, what do you know, that's gonna equal four. So that is equivalent. So these are two equivalent rates. They're not really giving you a price break for a t-shirt. So I guess, I mean, these are equal rates. If I'm trying to save money and I'm not sure how many t-shirts I want, I'd probably want to do this one. And then if I realize I need eight shirts, well, I'll just buy four more shirts. It's still going to cost me 40 bucks if I buy two groups of four shirts. Um, this next example, we're talking about songs and iTunes, and <laughs> unfortunately, this is not a realistic problem. iTunes charges a little bit more now for songs. But anyway, uh, if if maybe in the future they'll do deals for buying songs in bulk, 90 songs for 45 bucks. When I say bulk, I mean you're buying a lot of things at once. I don't know if everybody's familiar with that term. So we have 90 songs for 45 bucks. We're trying to see again, are these equivalent to each other? We could do a unit rate like we did the first time. We could just set them equal to each other. Um, I guess I'll just set these two equal to each other just so we can see what that looks like here. So 90 songs and $45. And then be really careful. This 45 here, it's songs, so that's going to go on the top. And then we have $30 right here. Now, it's tough for me to get from 45 to 30, but I can get from 90 to 45, if you know that. You divide it by 2. But let's say I, I couldn't do that. We could always do um, some scaling here. So if I divide 45 by 3, I'll get 15 bucks right here. And then if I divide 90 by 3, I will get 30 songs right here. So... With this first rate, I want to be real clear here. I'm going to draw a little line. That way we understand. This this rate right here, It's it deals with this one. And then uh, this rate right here, it's talking about the 90 songs for $45 deal. So 30 songs for 15 bucks. If I was to look at that, I'll use a different color again. Uh, we would multiply 15 by 2 to get to 30. But the trouble is, if I multiply 30 songs times 2, you don't get uh, 60 songs here. You get 45 songs. And that means that these rates are not equivalent. This one, in case you're curious, we're going for a unit rate. Per dollar, it looks like um, for every $1, this rate right here, this 90 songs for 45 bucks. Well... If we divide that by 45, we divide the top part by 45 too. You get two songs for one dollar. And then this rate right here, we had 45 songs for 30 bucks, right? Well, per dollar, we divide the bottom part, the denominator, by 30. We get one dollar. 
But if we divide 45 by 30, we don't get two songs anymore. Let's see what that comes to. 45 divided into 30 pieces. I think there'd be 15 left over. It looks like it'll be one and a half. 30 goes into 45 one time. There's 30 left over. We subtract 15 from there. Or I'm sorry, we subtract 30 from there and get 15. Bring down that zero. And that's 150. 30 goes into 150 five times, right? Because we can cross off the zeros. Three times five is 15. So this will be 1.5. So you can get one and a half songs for one dollar with this other deal. So I would take this deal right here. Usually when you buy in bulk, you're gonna get price breaks, and that's the case in this situation. Uh, and then finally the last one. Just find four equivalent rates for four tickets for 50 bucks. So I don't know, I'll make a table for this one. So it's important to distinguish, you know, what what's going to be your uh, the two things that you're you're measuring here. So we're measuring, of course, tickets and money. So we've got that, and the rate they've already given us is four tickets for fifty bucks. Well, I know I could. These two have a common factor. Do you recognize that common factor? It's two. If we divide them both by two, then we'll be able to find a common rate right there. So dividing this by two. And this right here by two, we'd get two tickets for 25 bucks. That's one equivalent rate. All right, we got one done. Um, I could also divide that two by two as well. So if I divide two by two here, divide that by two, again, we're going to get a one here. And then 25 divided by two, that's kind of tough to do in your head maybe, but you know maybe that 10 times 2 is 20, so it's going to be a little bit more than 10. And if you know your, your 12s tables, you know that 2 goes into 25 12 times. There's one left over. And anytime you have an even, or I'm sorry, an even number, you have an odd number, and you're dividing it by 2, you're going to be left with 0.5 um, for the decimal point. So... For every one ticket, it's twelve and a half dollars or twelve dollars and fifty cents. Okay, so we've got two equivalent rates, and we've done all the dividing. I think that we can do. If we were to multiply this, and I won't multiply this one that I just did since that comes to a decimal. Maybe I could multiply this one right here. You can multiply it by pretty much anything you want. I think an easy number to multiply by though is ten, because ten is kind of simple to do in your head. You get two hundred fifty dollars, and Make sure you get your money's worth if you get $250. You're going to multiply that 2 right there by 10, and that'll equal 20 tickets. So again, we multiply both of those numbers by 10. And really, I can multiply any of these numbers that I want by, by anything, as long as they obviously don't come out to the same thing, since we're trying to find four different rates. Right now, I found three. Um, I guess a fourth rate, what we could do is just I'll make things simple for myself. I'll just multiply the one I just did by 10 and you could get 200 tickets maybe you're going with a big group maybe you're going on a, on a class field trip to a Bruins game that would be pretty cool right that'll be the day right $2,500 for that if anybody has $2,500 I would be willing to uh, to do a little Bruins field trip sometime maybe I don't know the season's kind of ending but anyway we'll um We'll review this some more in class, but l let me know if, if this if this makes sense to you, and uh, hopefully it does. The concept goes along pretty similarly with what we've been studying with graphing the ratios and using tables, and um, so hopefully this is more review than anything else.